Hey guys, Skylar from He Is Legend here, and you're watching Desert TV. <laughs>
you like the party are you guys having a good time we came a long way to not not party Ooh, yo give it up for final fall everybody give it up keep it going for our homies and hammers everyone please fastest friends we ever made and they've They've done so much for us. Uh, we're, we're so grateful to be here. We're grateful to you guys for showing the fuck up. If you know what I mean, and I think you do. Um, and let's go ahead and give it up for Christian and Moe's. This place is rad. The story behind it is rad. And I will say, let me say one thing. If a, if a music venue makes it through a, a worldwide pandemic, I think you got a sweet spot. So. Thank you guys for this show. Thanks for coming. And uh, we're going to keep rocking for you. And uh, stick around after the show. We'll be hanging out. So let's, let's chat.
Rambo. Thank you. You guys are fucking fun, man. Give yourselves a round of applause. So we come from a place called North Carolina, and uh, we came a long fucking way to get here. And the, the fact that you guys showed up is immensely amazing to us and important. And, we love you for doing it, and so you didn't have to come. It's Wednesday night. We're very, very grateful that you've spent your Wednesday with us, so thank you. We just put out a new record back in November called Endless Hallway. Any of y'all pick that up? All right. Well, uh... We're gonna play some new shit. You ready for that? You think that's all right? Let us know. Round of applause if you want to hear a new song. I didn't expect you not to clap. Shit, that was a joke. It'd be funny though. Play the old shit, fucker. Okay, we'll do that too. But uh, this one's called Return to the Garden. <laughs>
I'm Tiana, you're watching Desert TV, and I am here with the one and only Skylar Kroom from He Is Legend, all the way from North Carolina. Welcome, Skylar. Thanks for having me, Tiana. It's, Cheers. It's an absolute pleasure to have you, and it's not only the fact that we're getting you back in Australia after seven years and a little bit extra, but it's also your first show on the Gold Coast tonight. Tell me how, what about thoughts about the Gold Coast so far for He Is Legend? We got here and immediately felt at home because we are from the beach as well. So um, the weather here right now is a perfect like October, like spooky weather. Yes. So we brought a little gloom with us and it, you know, it's like, it's, it's getting summery back home. So it was nice to come over here and be like, oh, we just left this weather and yeah. it's perfect. So just I like a little rain and, yeah. you know, it's, it's nice. And 
being able to smell the ocean and like wake up to the sound of the waves is we needed that. It was yeah. really good. Yeah. So it's com- we are very comfortable here. I love that. And I like chasing the spooky season everywhere you go. It's very on brand. I yeah, like it this. follows us. <laughs> yeah. We yeah, we're the we the sun and rain, you know, it's yeah. like the yin and yang of of it. We're yeah. all right with that. I love this. And I know obviously for you guys there's been a lot going on with the band in the world in general since you've been here. We've got two albums that no one in Australia has heard on Australian soil. I'm sure right. some people have probably been able to be lucky enough to hear it overseas, but we've got White Bat, Endless Hallway, all of that coming through. Crafting a set list, mm-hmm. given like it's been a little bit of time, we've got all this new material. What did or didn't like dictate what eventually made the set list for these shows? I think we go into writing a set list unless it's like completely curated to the event. Um, especially here because we we love Australia and we don't get the opportunity to come that often. I know as a fan, if I was seeing a band from here come and only play songs off of one record, like I would probably not be jazzed. You know, I want to hear some hits. And um, I think we do, we did a good job at like cherry picking, bangers. Usually we'll start a set off like, you know, we know we have to hit these marks. Like where can we journey and like make it a little weird or like a little, um, you know, our, our set, we tend to like have a bit of groove and vibe and uh, you know, ambiance and atmosphere in our our tunes. So um, we like to see how far we can go left or right and then bring it all back. But usually cherry pick the the hard hitters. And yeah. You know where to go from there. Well, it's the smart thing to do. And I know with so many songs to choose from and more and more increasingly as each amazing new album comes to pass. But is there a song, even if it's not one that's appearing in the set list tonight, that you just personally absolutely adore playing live, like no matter how many times you played it? Yeah, there's songs, there's plenty of them that I love. And I mean, some that that we've talked about, like that are we- too weird to play. Mm-hmm. Like um, people ask for time to stay in a lot. And we've done that a couple of times, like a couple of tours. And it was cool in the right setting, but just not the vibe for some shows. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe at a more intimate gig where we could like really bring it down and like and do a, a run of like slow tunes but that that song was very personal and like felt uh it felt good to actually play it but i don't think it fits too well with our set but i mean it's still a legend song and, and fun but uh yeah there's songs like be easy i love playing like the the funky stuff i grew up a, as a drummer you know mm. so my i love watching Jesse, he's like my favorite drummer anyway. So yes. um, I vibe more off of the the beat with that. So like mm-hmm. songs that are more insane, like I don't know, we, we'll probably play Circus Circus someday off of, uh, off of Endless Hallway, but that song in general is just like drummy and stuff. So that's one I'm, I'm looking forward to yeah. trying out. But yeah. yeah, there's tons of songs that like, every time it's groovy and even even the songs i don't like playing live like in the moment on stage i'm with it you know mm. like i'm i'm 100 with the song you know i mean yeah. it's it's not so fun to play i am hollywood but in the moment it's fun because the kids are having fun exactly. the people are having fun that are there so yeah. Yeah, I'm into that. Yeah, it's very diplomatic too. I like, like to make people happy. Oh, well, you do a very good job at it. Thank you. And Thank I think you. a lot of that, you know, making people happy, a lot of people missed during COVID not to like harp on about the pandemic, but like we didn't get to be in the same room. Yeah. We didn't get to experience that like face-to-face connection and having all of that there. Like for yourselves, you guys have been doing this for, you know, a pretty long t- portion of your lives, like since you guys were teenagers, yeah. majority of you. Can you capture that moment when you could actually get back out on stage after having that taken away from you and just be able to be in that moment? Like, was it exciting, terrifying, all the above? Like, how was that moment for you personally? COVID was a tragic time for everyone. And for, I've, I've, I've had this conversation a lot of times. It's hard to articulate, like, what actually it felt like because we were on the road this was a very surreal moment in just life because our booking agent called us on my birthday and we were on tour with while she sleeps. We were heading from Reno. We went, we drove straight to Reno just to party on my birthday. I was drinking bloody Mary's at 7am 
because it's Vegas and you can do that. So I was very like, not to. <laughs> gonna start with Bloody Marys. I'm gonna probably take a nap by like nine thirty. <laughs> you know, because we, we drove through the night and maybe noon. I got a call and I'm like, yeah, happy birthday to me. And he uh, he said, uh, go home, don't come to California. And I was like, what's going on? And he's like, did you see the news? And I was like, no, he's like, Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, just closed all public spaces. And I was like, well, if your booking agent, who is the only person taking money from you on the road, really, um, is telling you to go home, then like, okay, we're going home. Mm -hmm. As we're driving from Reno to Wilmington, which is about a 60 some hour trip, we hit a frozen fog bank on I-80 in Cheyenne, which like is a terrible stretch of road in America. I-80 is like, every time I die, I flip their van there. I mean, like oh, millions of bands have gotten, millions, maybe not, but millions of people have gotten severely injured and killed on this stretch of road. First time I'd ever heard of frozen fog, like a frozen fog bank had hit this valley. And they told us it was somewhere between Salt Lake and, uh, and Denver maybe, but this, you know, 300 miles of mountains and valleys. And in the town they said, you know, m m granted we're like beelining at home, trying to get home fast. Cause to us, like, the world is ending yeah. and we're all we're hearing is that like people are stuck like there, there's no toilet paper i'm like there's no toilet paper where are we what kind of <laughs> so so i'm like in gas you know gas stations and truck stops like am i gonna do i need to steal toilet paper when i get home and this is what's going through my head and yeah. it's like you, you our our country is very divided and like it's even it's probably better or worse than the media makes it seem. But like you can feel that division really heavy in the rural areas and like traveling and truck stops and stuff like that. You know, it's there. It's there. Mm -hmm. So being in a band, we were the first ones called off the road, you know, like no more music, go home. Mm -hmm. And then we sat there for two and a half years, not knowing if we would ever play a show again. Mm -hmm. The first show we played back was Furnace Fest. And uh, we played for like 10,000 people because because we, we had a, I mean, we had a cushy spot because we opened the main stage. But those, most of the people there and most of the bands there, we have done this journey with, mm -hmm. you know, like, um, and so, so, so grateful to like see friends. We hadn't seen them forever. Um, hug people, yeah. like touch other people. And uh, I had been battling an illness, which I've, you know, talked to you about in the past. And mm -hmm. um, so it was my first time back on stage. I got sick directly after and I missed everything that happened after, but I made it through the show. I threw up on the side <laughs> of the stage and then I was sick for five straight days after that. Um, so yeah, my experience with COVID, I became the best version of myself I've ever been, but it was through like turmoil and struggle mm -hmm. and like self-development, self-care and having a loving partner and family and having my, my brothers with, you know, like they never stopped doing what they do. Mm -hmm. COVID did not affect he is legend. We continued to do what we do. They met Adam and Jesse met up all the time. That's how Endless Hallway was like just riffing and getting out aggression, you know? And I mean, it was a challenge. It was a crazy, crazy time, but it was also like a, a huge growth spurt for a lot of people, mm -hmm. which I think this world needed maybe a, you know, sometimes you got to set the woods on fire for it to be more lush in a few years. Yeah. So um, yeah, it was, it was surreal. Furnace Fest kind of was like a dream. The first real shows we did with Attila, like the first real tour we did back. Um, just the the strangest little things that you you would see someone you hadn't seen in two years. And the, and we've all aged two years, you know, like it's on our faces, it's it's in our in our the color on our in our hair and uh in the smile lines and and you know, you see these people who you would see three or four times a year. And you just took a two and a half year break from seeing. So like 
overwhelmingly humbled by people showing up and still giving a shit because mm -hmm. I think that what COVID did was kind of separate the wheat from the shaft, you know, and like a lot of bands couldn't, couldn't hoof it and mm -hmm. it made it easier for people to be like, I'm not doing this anymore. And like standing up for yourself and doing um, just, you know, and, and also getting back to what it's for is doing it for the, the people who give a shit about music. And that's why we've always done it. And so I think the one takeaway is like, never take it for granted. Mm -hmm. Tonight could be our last show. And, you know, so why not make it the best one? Yeah, absolutely. And it's so exciting to hear the artists and yourself, someone like yourself saying that because it's so reciprocated from the fans and the people in the audience. And to emerge from a pandemic with an incredible album and White Bat obviously still incredible that kind of had to skirt through all of that yeah. as well. Like it's so exciting that you guys have continued and returned to Australia. Oh, we yes. are so excited. So stoked. Here. I mean, I'm, I, I couldn't be more excited. And the fact that it happened so organically and that everyone just like, helped out so much you know it was it, it it's just um such a fortunate thing yeah. and and i'm a huge fan of like you know developing connections and like when they're like oh this is working out great we should do this you know um some of the best experiences of my life have come out of just simple like hey let's work together mm. you know so um, I couldn't be ha more happy about what's happening and like indebted to you guys for working your asses off for our our little band, little American rock band. <laughs> well, yeah, little, I, I might disagree with it. It would be rude to do that, so I won't. But final question before you continue on with, with this amazing Gold Coast show tonight, given I have dragged you on desert TV. Listen, what is, I'm, I'm here for it. Oh, and I love and it. Cheers to that. Thanks yeah, for cheers, having Cheers me. to that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> delicious yeah, it's great. but to close us out in the desert theme let's make it like really really cliche what mm -hmm. is Skylar Croom's Desert Island album that you would take with you to company if you could only take one album with you oh my god to put you on the spot dramatically one album or okay we can have a top three maybe top I'll three. allow a top three I would take um Paranoid by Black Sabbath um all Things Must Pass by George Harrison. And 36 Chambers by the Wu-Tang Clan. Okay, I want to come to the, I think everyone needs to come to the deserted island and just have a party. It sounds I would, amazing. I Less would deserted, throw, like, but. Pet Sounds in there too. If I could do a top oh, five, no, probably well, Pet oh, Sounds in like five. five, five okay, let's Pet go. Sounds in uh, um, uh, any Daft Punk album, probably. Probably homework, but yeah. I um, like this. Yeah. yeah. I need a little of, of, I need to run the gambit. Yeah. It's a nice eclectic mix <clears throat> and it seems very on brand for you guys to have a nice broad palette. So I think it yeah. works out well. This is very, very good. Yeah. We like, I think, I think I'd be all right. That would be mine, but I it would, that would probably not vibe with the rest of the two. You have to we get can, them we'll, out we'll here. Segre we'll separate yeah. it with like, you know, quarter it off. Yeah. And, Give know, everybody their Yeah, own. that's it. But like you can put your speaker a little bit closer just yeah. to like ram at home <laughs> yeah everybody gets their own blue that's chips. it well we'll look forward to that and more importantly we are so excited you've come back to australia obviously we will love to have you anytime you can come here not the it's our pleasure it's not the shortest flight but thank you for coming over congratulations on bringing everything with you and all the amazing music that you will continue to make and thank you thank for coming you, on tiana. desert tv thank you for having me we're so excited to be here love it i'm tiana and you're watching desert tv You guys still with us? We got some merch and shit back there. The lovely Tiana will be taken care of. Her. We'll be back there at the booth, hanging out, having some drinks, having some laughs. If you guys want to say hello, we'd love to meet you. What do you got there, bud? Is this a, pu a puppy? A blue dog? Caladad. Oh, this is from your heart. I love you, brother. Thank you. I love a fucking toy, man. You know that. This will be right here. Taking a look at Jesse. 
We love you. We love all of you. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us tonight. Oh, yeah, that was the first time we have ever played that song, so. I didn't die yet. Um, you guys heard our album, White Bat. Seems like you might have. You were singing along. This is another little tune off that album. Oh, if you didn't know, these are all dancing songs, so feel free to shake your ass and move around. I mean, that's what we're here for, right? On a Wednesday night. and Ben. What's up? These people have been friends of ours for a long time and I think, do you have something you want to say to someone on the crowd here? Let me, let, let me hand it over to you, Beck. You can do it. I'll be your boogie woman if you'll be my boogie man. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, for, forever, baby. It's all yours. <laughs> Yo, I'm a, I'm a um, ordained minister. So that shit's legal, baby. Blister mouth, the land is bare, ain't nothing sprout. Since you 
so much.
This has been a hell of a time tonight, man. Really, we really appreciate all of you for coming out. This has been a fucking blast. We got a couple more for you, and uh, then we'll see you on the streets, you know? But Let's pull out all the stops. Let's get hurt and uh, feel bad tomorrow. Let's let me make these last ones count, you know what I mean? Let's make them count. I want to see somebody do a fucking backflip. Get up in this bliss pit. I'm making it a thing. It's gonna stick, baby. You know, you come to a legend show, you get blissed out. It's not really, you're, it's heavy metal, but it's not, I don't know. But we just get fucking blissed out. You know, we have a good time and we're glad you're doing the same. So bliss out to this shit. Song's called Prowler. Fingers in the air, let's see it. Come on. Do that new metal shit we used to do. Flip us off.
You got one more in you, maybe? We were gonna play another one anyway. <laughs> None of this walk off, walk back on shit. Let's play it, you know what I mean? That's silly. That's silly, man, that's silly. Why do you do that? Why do we do that? I've always asked myself that question. Why did you do that? Why did you guys do that? Why'd you walk off and then just come right back on and play a soap? Mm. Well, this has just been a real treat. So thank you so much for coming out. We had ups, we had downs, mostly ups. Give it up again for the band. This is gonna be a really fun run with Hammer. So if you wanna come out tomorrow night, we're not too far down the road. You guys have been lovely. Thank you so much. Oh, and by the way, congratulations, man. That's, that's love. That's what I'll do.
cleanliness and lowliness is cleanliness and cleanliness is godliness and God is empty just like me. I said it, I said it, I said it!